Hello, this is Bongo John at Bongo John Studio. I'm here to demonstrate how to create um, a multiple instrument output into multiple channels in Cubase 14 Pro. If you happen to have a Native Instruments collection, like the uh, Native Instruments Complete Ultimate Complete co Condition Collection, <laughs> Some of them are kind of tongue twisters. They have multiple. Many of them have what is called contact, and that's spelled funny. It's like K O N T A K T T. <laughs> so anyway, uh, if you happen to have that, this is a way, as you know, you can load multiple instruments into it. But I get a lot of questions about, well, how do you, how do you mix it after you, if it's going through a stereo out in your DAW? What you would do is that you actually designate the outputs inside of one instance of, of uh, contact in Cubase 14 Pro. So um, so here we have Cubase 14 Pro in the uh, edit window. And we're going to go to, we're going to create an instrument. Say a little plus sign there. We're going to add track. We're going to go with instrument. Um, we're going to create one instance of this contact, which is already selected, and I'm placing that here. Now, note that we have here contact that is loaded, and we have down here, there's another video you can watch that's in my descriptor about how to set up your individual outputs within contact. So right here we have, I've set mine up. You can set them up in your own way. I set mine up for up to 16 individual instruments in one instance of contact. So right now I'm going to create a sound. Just to start with, we'll go with Arcus. We'll load that, right? And then we've got the, the sound loaded. And if we go, click this I arrow, you'll note this says ST1 out and MIDI channel 1 out, okay? So we're going to minimize that. I'm going to show you that it is already playing when we press the record. It's already here. So it's playing. So, okay, oh, that's great. Now, what a lot of people resort to is they'll just create however many contacts to load the different instruments, even though there's the option to route many instruments out of one instance of contact. Oh, that was a tongue twister, pardon. So anyway, but yes, it's not CPU intensive, uh, effective. It's CPU intensive is what's going on. So now you're going, well, okay, I'm gonna load another instrument to, into contact. I click this little keyboard button, see that? Edit instrument. And we'll load another sound, all right? So I go here. Now there's something quirky coming up that has just been realized that I figured out that it was causing issues earlier. That uh, we're gonna load uh, string 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 scratchers, right? So you're going okay. So now we have we want to route that to ST2, a different output within Cubase, so that we can mix it <laughs> the, the the two instruments separately or together, however you go about it, however you want to word it. So I go here, and then now we go activate outputs. And I see that, like, I'm clicking on it. It's not doing anything. That's frustrating. But you have to, so let me show you again. You click the down arrow here. You go to activate outputs. You have to right-click here, and then go to activate outputs again, and then click ST2. Then, after we've done that, we create another MIDI track, right? And this, so, so this one's contact one event input. Channel two is already incremented, as you can see here. And uh, we add that track, and we go here, and... Wonderful. So that's that's pretty much it for Cubase. It's a little bit 
a little bit more simple process than in Pro Tools. Pro Tools is a little bit more involved, but here. So I'll, I'm gonna create a third instrument just so that you know. So we go back up to here. Note that the c contact will load a third sound, right? Or a th you know, third instrument. So uh, we're gonna here to, uh, I don't know, uh, ev uh, ev Evolve Mutations to, uh, no, yeah, Strings and Transitions. And we're gonna load this in KI, right? And I go here and then I'm loading to ST3 output, but we have to designate it or you won't hear it. So we also have to create a MIDI track to for sound three, okay? So that third sound. So we have to create a MIDI track. MIDI track, channel three, add track. And then we wanna change this to be MIDI channel three. Now the strange thing I want to mention is that in both Pro Tools and Cubase that the first track you create is what's called an instrument track and that instrument track is both channel one MIDI and the output of the channel one MIDI instrument. Then that's why this has to increment to two as you can see, it's on channel two. So this is the MIDI track for channel two. MIDI two, all right? So then now when we go here, there will be no sound if I play this. This will not play. See that? So what's going, what's going on? There's, there's notes showing on the meter. Well, you have to go here. You have to activate outputs. You have to right click here Activate outputs, three, and then we have. Oh. So there you go. That's how you go about doing it. There's just a little stair-step menu on the far right side for activated outputs. It's a little confusing. It's not that intuitive. I suggest Cubase or Steinberg or whomever is in charge to make that a little more straightforward. Otherwise, people are going to get confused there. All right. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.